Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video about something that's been not bugging me, but it's been on my mind a little bit, um, and, and I've been seeing it more and more with people that I've like coached and stuff. Um, and this goes for like all classes and WoW, but it's basically on the topic of UIs. Essentially, this UIs can look good visually, but a lot of the times people forsake the performance factor of UIs and how they've set up their UIs. And I think that really hurts their potential gameplay, like, or hurts their gameplay relative to their potential, rather. So let's talk about what makes a good UI. So to start off, it's something very important to recognize is that a good UI's purpose is to help you when you're not paying attention to it. If the purpose of our UI was simply to actually just do maximum damage while, like, you know, things are chill and you're, like, paying attention to your rotation or whatever, then what's the difference in like looking over here at your top buffs compared to like looking at a weak aura pack the main thing the central theme is that like it's just easier to move your eyes from your character to your ui um and like pick out the important relevant information straight away so with that in mind there's a couple of things one proximity to your character and two how fast you can react to a ui or some relevant information so, let's tackle the first one. Proximity to character. Now, obviously, things being close to your character is really useful. And this is something that, if you don't do already, then I highly recommend. Um, if you're like in an intense part of the fight and you're looking at your, like, the mob or whatever, obviously looking down at your action bars here is going to take some like more time for you to like do. And then you're going to have to constantly go up and back. And then especially if you're like locked in over here, on the mob, you're not going to be noticing what's happening on your bars. So naturally, things in the middle are very important, right? That's basic. The extra element that I want to talk about, though, is also grouping things conceptually and utilizing more of the screen to be more useful. Generally speaking, the farther you are from the character, you want things to be bigger and then they can still actually be valuable. That's the proximity part. And then two, grouping things conceptually. So what I mean by this is, things that are relevant to each other should be closer together in the ui so you'll notice over here that i have my defensive pack over my health bar it's because the main time i'm going to be thinking about defenses is either if i'm pre-planning them or if i'm actually going to be reacting to my health or something like that and then I'll, you know i'll be looking at my health bar over here it would be stupid if my defenses are over here right like that just doesn't make sense why would i go here and then go back so being here is good however if you're somebody who likes a bigger health frame, for example, and you don't want your defensives to look like this because there's like it might take up too much room, or you want more room here, there are other versions you can do. So, you know, I'm not plugging my weak card pack, but obviously I think it's good. Um, there are alternative versions you can do. So I have this version, for example, which I've disabled, but effectively, because it's farther from the middle of the screen, you get to make them bigger. You can even make them bigger than this. You can make them like double the size. And that way, at all times, you'll have very easy access to the information that you'd want to know. This way, you'll free up a bit more real estate over here if you want it. Okay. Now, the next part has to do more with just like how to make UIs cleaner in terms of reaction time. And this is something that's like quote unquote objective, in my opinion. And I'm going to argue with that in mind. And I'm sorry if you disagree. But try to keep an open mind of why I'm saying this. So there's a couple of things. Through like research in cognitive science and stuff, we know that the brain reacts in certain ways. Now, how relevant is this uh, and like how important is this? There are two things that I'm going to espouse as something positive you should do. And there are a couple of things that are negative, as in like you're removing something, um, which I really uh, also want to argue for. The first thing I'm going to argue for is basically the idea of things appearing and then being invisible when they're not active. And then the second thing is about the idea of using color to make things more noticeable. And there's a specific two colors that you actually want to go for. So firstly, the idea of appearing. One thing I would recommend basically is when you're tracking buffs, don't have the buff always be there in like a turned off state, like it's grayed out or something, and then it appears when it's actually active. This is something that a lot of like baseline weak quarter packs will do, 
Uh, and the purpose of them doing it like that is just so that the buff is always there and like it's quote unquote easier to see because it's you know where that place is or something like that. Or it could be just to like maintain symmetry, visual appeal, right? The problem is that if you like, there are studies out there that show that things appearing are actually like just worse, or sorry, something appearing that wasn't there previously is easier to detect compared to like something changing. And there's like numerous studies for this, uh, that basically support this. So I'm just gonna like show a couple. You don't have to care about this. Sorry for the flashbang. Like there's something like this one, this study you can look at, and there's something like this one as well that you can look at. And it's just like basic, There, are, I'm sure there's a plethora of studies, and I just picked two random ones that support the, the conclusion I'm going for here. But the idea is that if something is not there, and then it appears it's a lot more noticeable than if something is there, but then had some sort of like slight change, like a color change or something like that, right? Um, so keep that in mind. And then the other thing I want to talk about is also color change. So color is criminally underutilized in WoW UIs, and I think people should use it more often. And this is especially true for when something is really important. So, you know, we have our core packs and, and they all have icons. But the thing is, we're not forced to track things through icons, right? Like if I want to track nether precision, let's say, I don't need to track it where it's like the icon and then it shows me the number of stacks. You can use shapes and colors. So for example, if I hit the dummy a little bit, Get a clear casting proc. Surely, there we go, right? I'm gonna clear casting and you're gonna see I get two nether precision buffs here, right? Now, they're green and that's for a reason and it's even relative to this bar um, and I'll talk about it soon. But the idea is that color is really useful to look at. Uh, there are like other forms of this. So for example, if I like, actually I have a VOD ready for this. If I look at a pull of a Dementius pull, You'll see here that my Touch of the Magi glows green. Why? In a second. Why does Touch of the Magi glow green? And the value of it glowing green is simply the fact that it's basically a reminder to tell me that, hey, I should be touching the Magi soon. And like it's grabbing my attention and it's reminding me basically to shifting power. Normally, I actually don't track shifting power, but here I'm tracking it because of M plus reasons. But the idea is that you can utilize color to like be a special alerts, right? And the thing is, it's not just color, but it's also color in contrast. That's really, really important because you obviously don't just want everything to be green and you don't just want to use a certain color for your whole UI. The ideal case is instead you'd want your colors to be contrasted to each other where you'd want opposite colors to be close together so that they're more visually popping. So for example, let's look at my nether precision, right? My nether precision orbs, as I was talking about earlier, they're green. And then you look here, my spellfire sphere bars are red. The value of this being in this orientation, and it's actually not a coincidence that this is like green, red, and blue, is because these colors are all the most opposite color on the, like the color wheel or whatever, right? The, the visual, like the cones that we use in our eyes. Specifically, the red green one has the fastest detection rate, like in your brain. Um, and it's not a huge amount. We're talking about like roughly like 0.1 millisecond or 0.1 seconds sorry so 100 milliseconds but you know as well players that's something valuable i think that we should consider um so you'll see like my bars here for example they go from red to green when it's like time to cast barrage or whatever and then the purpose of this is that even when i'm not paying attention when i'm paying attention to over here i'm gonna notice this color change very easily because it pops out a little bit more okay compared to for example if it went from red to purple or something like that right And then obviously, yeah, grouping things so that things pop out more. This is actually something I do, like my fire UI, for example. Uh, you'll notice that my fire blast charges are blue. Why? Because most of fire spells are red, and the opposite of red is blue. So if I want thing, something to be tracked, and it's like the most important thing, I'm going to reserve that color for it. Okay? Just so it is most visually appealing. And lastly, it's just the use of shapes instead of like just an icon because at least to me and i believe this is the case too i actually do not have a study unfortunately ready for this but our brain does recognize uh, shapes and smaller numbers faster than the recognition of like basically deciphering a linguistic uh, like a number or something like that well uh, a <laughs> number in a language right um 
So the idea of like three squares popping up is easier to recognize as three, especially when you're not paying attention to it, compared to like the number three popping up. Okay. So I always like to use shapes instead of like icons for things that are really, really important for that reason, especially because you can change color of them and stuff really easily. Um, and you can play around with it. Like with my IB bar, I actually have it like go, I have a, a version where like it goes a big purple glow for when I have GI proc. I have it disabled because I track GI in other ways as well, but like it's an option in my week order pack. But it just gives you an idea of what you can do with it. Um, yeah, like I can actually show it. We'll be in fire. Here, like it would look like this, right? Just to kind of visualize it. Yeah. Anyway, now to talk about something a bit more and something a bit like, okay, like what do I do with this information? How do I actually utilize this for making my UI a bit better? So I actually have a screenshot of a UI that I grabbed from somebody. I'm really sorry if this is your UI. I didn't pick you on purpose. This, I, I found a random YouTube video. Uh, so let, let's look at this. And what is like useful and not useful in this UI? So a couple of things. This is the negative part I was talking about. People track their weak orders stuff in a really weird way. And it's very bad. So the very first thing I would recommend is Get rid of things that are not relevant to your decision making. Main things that fall under this category is stuff like your potion being active, lust being in the central pack. I think tracking lust is okay, but just have it at least not in the center pack is what I would recommend. They definitely don't have it as big as the rest. Tracking like trinket procs, like this stuff is completely irrelevant because you're not actually making decisions around these things. Like, you're never going to be like, oh, I need to cast an extra barrage here or cast an extra missile here instead of a blast because I have this trinket proc, right? These effects are never as valuable as the buffs and procs from our class themselves because, like, you know, in the state of modern WoW, you, like, hover a spell and there's, like, 10 modifiers in there, right? And it's like, okay, fucking a, a thousand or 10,000 intellect even out of 130,000, which is like not even 10% damage, right? Is nothing in comparison. All right. So tracking these trinket procs does nothing but introduce more like busyness on the screen. This is something that is supported by study for what it, for what it's worth. Um, by study, so, you know, do get rid of uh, like irrelevant buffs because it's just going to make your screen more busy and it's going to be harder to notice things that are more important. So in this UI, for example, like I said, I would take out pot, I would take out trinkets. I would even consider like making harmony not as visually apparent because you're not really making decisions around harmony. Okay, now the next thing is something that is really, really, really bad in a lot of UIs and I really hate this. So remember how I talked about like tracking important buffs as shapes instead of as icons? So for example, here the clear casting. Let's say this person really doesn't want to do a shape for their UI. Okay, for clear casting or for spell fire spheres like I do. Can we make this better? Yes, a billion times yes. And the way you make this better is by actually changing which texts are being shown and the way it's actually displayed. So look at look at spell fire spheres as an example. Right? As Arcane we play around spell fire spheres obviously quite a lot with burden, GI, and with you know the number of clear castings even though we have can affect your gameplay decisions. Why are we ever tracking the duration of these buffs in the middle as the big text when these buffs never expire, right? Like, in what world does clear casting ever expire? Or in what world do spell fire spheres ever expire? Never, right? Clear casting, like, maybe you can make an argument in M plus or something, but, like, between packs. But it's not like you can do something about that, right? Like, you can recognize that in the future, like, oh... I noticed that in the past five runs, I've dropped clear casting here. Do you need a timer to track that? No. So certainly it doesn't make sense that the number of clear casting stacks, which is the most important part, or the number of spellfire spheres, which is also the most important part, is tracked as the small ass number in the bottom right corner. Like that, and then the big one is the irrelevant piece of information, right? This just does not make sense at all. So that's like a big change you can do, right? Now, we can even like talk about other specs UIs, 
Um, so actually I can go on to a different character to showcase this a little bit. So let's go on my, I think Elemental Shaman can showcase this well. This would apply to like any spender generator spec for what it's worth. Um, but the basic concept is this. On a lot of specs in the game, you are tracking your resource bar. And then a lot of specs will also track like an icon for the spender itself for some reason. Even though you like should know how much resource you need. Right? It's either you get one or the other. It doesn't make sense to track both. So I have this like Luxtos pack. And like, you know, shout out Luxtos. He makes great weak order packs in terms of like, customizability. And I love using them for like all my alts and stuff. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what is the purpose of tracking like Lava Burst two times, right? Like there's the bottom bar, which is Lava Burst. And then there's also the icon. Like, do we need both, right? Can we repurpose the bottom bar into something else? And this exists on many UIs, right? There's also a resource bar like I was talking about. And then there's also a spender bar in the middle of the screen. Do I need both? There's already even ticks on these bars. It just kind of doesn't make sense that you need to track both. Because just straight up, you just don't need to have both. Instead, you can minimize the UI a lot more and remove like clutter by just deleting things you don't need. So Echo the Great Thundering, you know, you can argue, oh, well, you want to see this there. But once again, like I was talking about earlier, things popping out is actually much better than it not being... Like, yeah, it glows when I have Echo Great Thundering, but things popping out when you can compared to when you don't. Like, you know, things being there all the time and then it's glowing. I think it's much more noticeable when they pop out. So, for example, for this UI, like, I would recommend, like, removing the Elemental Blast. Learn the amount that you need. Because, frankly, you just, you know, if you play this by Kowal, you can even add a tick to represent that amount that you need. So you can, you know, maybe don't need to remember it. Um, and then Echo the Great Thundering should either just be an icon that pops up when it's available, like a proc over here. Or you can, like, for example, change the color of the Maelstrom Bar. Why do we need the Maelstrom Bar to be one color the whole time? What if we change it so that it's green when you want to actually be able to cast Earthquake? And then have it be red when you can only cast Elemental Blast. Right? Like, suddenly we can delete two icons. Oh, we're tracking bars for Lava Burst. Suddenly we can delete this one, you know, if you want to do that. Or you can keep this one and delete this one. And then, like, make the Maelstrom bar bigger. Maybe, for example, on this bar, instead of just tracking, like, Lava Burst, why don't we track the instant Chain Lightnings that we get from casting Tempest? Right? There's a lot of things that you can include in UIs. By deleting other things that are irrelevant and then just overall make your UI a lot better and smoother. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the majority of what I wanted to talk about. I would really recommend people look at their UIs and try and work on them with these concepts in mind because it's just, you know, it, it does help you just play better and you just become more efficient as a player when your information is displayed to you from your UI is just, frankly, it's just giving you information in a better way and you're going to react to it a lot better so highly recommend people look at their ui check it out you know try to use these principles if you disagree with something i said by all means like feel free to argue in the comment section um i'll be more than happy to hear opinions because i've been told about like something i've been doing wrong in the past that i've genuinely like reversed my decision on and changed my ui in accordance to it but yeah thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one